Okay, talking about generators. Mm -hmm. We left off yesterday with the A type and the B type. So the A type generators need a ground to complete the field. And why is that important, the field? What's the field have to do with anything? That generates the current. That's what we control to control the output of the generator. We have to control the field. This is a what? Armature. And it rotates inside of the generator. And what rides on the commutator? The brushes. Brushes. Carbon brushes. All right. So you guys remember some stuff. So that's good. All right. All right. Uh, classification of generators. See, now the pin's not there. Not there. Whatever. All right. Classification generators. Classification of generators. There they are. Who knows? Now that thing's there. Okay, classification generators. Uh, there are three classifications. DC generators. We'll make sure I'm specific. We're talking about DC generators and that's pretty much all we're talking about right now. So three classifications. Uh, there is the shunt wound. What does shunt mean? Parallel. 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 Right on. Why, don't, where, why did we talk about that? So, the field coils. Field coils are connected in parallel. With the armature. With armature and parallel to the load. It is interesting that you're expected to know this because what alternator should you put on the aircraft? The right kind. Or the generator. Said, yes, the, the one that it calls for. There we go. So what is that right there? That right there, and that's my brush. So what's the thing in the middle? The thing in the middle is the communicator. Okay, arm, arm it represents the armature. So we got this. What happens if I just hold that? Nothing. That's the load. And then this would be the field. So that is shunt wound. It is in? Parallel, parallel the field, parallel the load. <coughs> okay, thing to remember about the load, the load is the aircraft load. How is the aircraft wired? Parallel, in parallel. parallel, so everything's in parallel pretty much. Parallel. Shunt wound, <laughs> series wound. So field coils are in series. With field coils are in series with the armature. And in series with the load. You're giving it away, man. I'm sorry. And in series with the load. I'll put it right over here. Change my pin. So we've got the 
armature with the brushes. And let me think. That is in. That is in series. Oh, series. The whole thing's in series. And look at me changing pins. Well, what's the next one, Smarty Pants? Series. Wrong. Compound. 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 Compound wound. So field coils are in series parallel with the armature and load. What does that look like? That's just a little bit different here. So we've got just loving the circle thing. It's the only perfect shape in the whole drawing. Oh, gosh. So that there is in. What? Series. Series, and here's your parallel part. There we go. So two different yes. Well, okay, the other ones have two different windings too, but they just the drawing represents one. But, the, so you but it's two. It represents two, but it just shows one. Okay. Yeah, but this way, it's, they got to do it this way. All right, let's take a look at each one individually. Shunt means parallel. parallel. So also known as parallel. Hey, work. Um, all right. So I don't love this comes out of a, a, a source and some of it's correct. Some it's like, well, so like must use a regulator because and then when I write that it's like well I don't know any generator on an aircraft that doesn't use a regulator so I don't know why they would put that statement but I, I left it there and I left this stuff in here even though in some ways it's a little confusing but if you think it through it's like oh yeah and it kind of uh, Helps you understand some stuff, so. Maybe this will be the last time I do it. Generator output. Output can travel through the aircraft load or the field. Can travel through. I'll just put load. Obviously, it's aircraft load or field. So we'll take a look at that shunt wound right there, parallel. So output of the generator, which is the armature, 
comes out of the armature, one side is going to be positive, one side is going to be negative. It's just I'm arbitrarily going to do that. And so it comes out of the here, and so it has a choice. Load or field, correct? Okay, let's think this through here. Um, which way will that current tend to want to go mostly? Okay. Uh, I'll put out the current. Will um, proportionally, that's a better word. Oops, if I spell it right, it's even a better word. Proportionally choose the easiest path. Why do I say proportionally? Because some goes to the another harder path, but but not but no, still flow, but not as much. Yeah, we know electricity. It when we people oh electricity takes the path of least resistance. No, it doesn't. Because if you had a parallel circuit and you had a one ohm and a two ohm, which one's easier to go through? One so we're saying what nothing goes through the two. We know that's false, right? Proportionate goes through it. So. So if the aircraft, and this is, I think, the, this point why I left this here. If the aircraft load increases, so if, we'll say, load increases. In other words, I got the airplane, and we're flying at night. Okay, so I turn on the nav lights, the taxi light, the landing light, the rotating beacon, the strobes, um, identification lights, tail lights. I'm increasing the load, right? What happens to resistance as I keep adding all these loads? Increases. Well, now does it? No, it goes down because it's parallel. It's parallel. You got a parallel circuit. So the total resistance goes down. And I add a load, say it's 100 ohms, and I add another 100 ohm load, and then I add another oops, 100 ohm load. I keep doing that. We'll make that one 600 now because it looks more like a 600. Every time I do this, am I adding more resistance or decreasing it? Decreasing it. Every time I add another load because that's the way it works in parallel. So if the load increases, the resistance will what? Decrease. Uh, if the load increases, the resistance will decrease. Well, if the resistance decreases, where is the current going to want to go? To the coil. Oh, wait. It doesn't want to go through the coil as much. All right. This causes less current to flow to the field. All right, so we know how generators work, right? So every time I turn on one of those items, the resistance goes down, 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 down but the current draw goes uh, up. up because of Ohm's law. So I need more amperage every time I click something on. In order to get more amperage out of the generator, what does the generator need to do to create more amps? Increase the field. We have to increase the field. Increase the field, we increase the armature going through the mag uh, magnetic field, which increases the output. Everybody follow that? Okay. So is this a problem? Yes. It's working the opposite the way we want it. So it causes less current to flow through the field. We'll say not what we wanted, not what we want. For sure, for sure. Why did it do that? Oh, geez. Not at all what we want. And then the opposite's true as the aircraft load decreases. Then what happens? Mm, increases in the field. 
algebra inverse problem. So we start shedding off all this load. All right, I don't need that light, don't need that light, don't need that light. So what happens to the resistance of the loads? It goes, goes up. So now what's the current output of the armature is going to go to what? The field. the field. So the field gets stronger. So the field gets stronger. What's the generator going to do? Put out more current. Put out more current. Where's that current going to go? I don't know. <laughs> it's got to go. Back to the field. <laughs> oh, we'll just yeah, route it to ground, right? All right. Uh, inverse problem. So this is this is why a regulator is so important. So this well, is get hella hot or why a regulator is so important. All right. Then we have the series wound. All right, so everything is in series now. So field, armature, and load are in are in series. So if it's all in series, let's think this one through. I add a bunch of loads, so the resistance, we'll go look at a picture here. Here we go, so now the, the load, I add a bunch of loads, the resistance in the load is going to go, the load represents a whole bunch of things in parallel. So the load right there, well, that was very interesting because I used the wrong pin, but there we go, we got it. So the, this, within this, the, the load resistance goes down. down. Okay, so load resistance goes down. What is that going to do to flow, current flow? Increases current flow. Okay, so we got an increase in current flow. What happened with the increase in current flow across the coils? Field got stronger. Field got stronger against the armature. What happened to the output of the generator? Increases output. Yes. Which then would increase, because it goes to the coil right away, has a feedback loop. So that kind of works. It does have a bit of a feedback loop. I could see if you could balance it out just right, maybe that would work without a regulator. I don't know. Never seen one without a regulator, but so let me see. No. Okay, field armature series in load. Now I want to abbreviate some of this. Um, let's see. Well, we can just say at that point, then uh, load resistance uh, can dang, um, can control generator output. Maybe not very well, but it can. See, when, re when the load increases, resistance will be less because the aircraft loads are This cause the field current to increase and output to increase. Yeah, that's what we did. When the load is reduced, no more resistance. The current outputs reduced. Series wound generators, oh, I'll write this one. Series wound generators are best in regulated RPM settings and not in aircraft. Uh, our best in regulated RPM settings. And not in aircraft. So it is Something worth thinking about, because I know some of the crazy responses I've gotten in orals from other classes, not this class. When we talk about generators and, and, and various things, you have to, I have to point this out because people don't realize it. As a pilot, I have to be able to control the RPM of the engine to meet my needs as a pilot. 
I cannot have an engine doing what it wants to do. When I'm coming in for a landing, I cannot have an engine suddenly go to full RPM because it generator needs to generate more. Now you'd think it's silly for me to stand up here and talk about it, but I'm gonna tell you, like half the class that during an oral will tell me something like that. Well, what if I need more output of the generator? Oh, you just increase the engine speed. What if I'm coming in for a landing? Increase the engine speed more? Yeah, it's like, okay, okay. Yeah, so I have to say it, you know. It, I know, that's why you carry, uh, you know, cement buckets with you, throw them out, anchors. <laughs> Isn't that what, that's why uh, aircraft, car uh, aircraft, Navy aircraft have the tail hook. So they can run it at full RPM because of the generator. No. All right, so. <laughs> okay. You have to be able to control the RPM of the engine. When I'm coming in for a landing, guess what I do with my engine? I pull the RPM back. If I push it forward to go faster, the airplane goes up and the houses get smaller. All right? And so I need the houses to get bigger because I'm coming in for landing. So I can't have a generator dictating what my engine is doing. And all right, so, uh, um, so the generator has to be regulated based upon an engine that's going to be going fast and slow, slow or fast. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. Um, but for small aircraft, that's the way it works. Now we get into, and we don't even do it in this class because I'm already so overbooked. Uh, at some point, Phil in second year is going to talk to you about generators on large aircraft that actually run off of a constant speed drive. So they run like an automatic transmission, if you will, and you're going to figure out how this automatic transmission works. It's really cool because uh, I taught that class for a while. But it actually, you can run the aircraft engine slow and the generator goes at an exact speed and then you can speed up the engine and the generator just stays at that speed because the automatic transmission, if you will, the CSD or constant speed drive. And the reason why it's so important to keep a generator, it's AC generator, at a constant speed is because the output is varied by it. The output frequency is varied. Remember? The faster you spin it, changes frequency. We gotta have the same frequency. So we have a constant speed drive. But for the generators we're talking about, small generators, small aircraft, older cars, things like that, uh, the car speeds up and slows down. And so does the airplane. That would be a good experiment. Everybody has to try and get home tonight at the same RPM. You can't, uh, <laughs> you, you gotta go to 4,500 RPM. Okay, those and all. are not the problem. <laughs> I got people with CVTs have an advantage though, okay? Yeah, I gotta stick to the clock. Yeah, burn that clutch, <laughs> man. Downhill, you go neutral. No, you try to run the clutch really early. What if I ride a bicycle? Oh, you can do it on a bike, maybe. No, a bicycle. I know, I have a bicycle. Compound wound. Is yes, tomorrow supposed to be some sort of spare the air thing where everybody's supposed to drive a bike? Oh, I saw that. Yep. So. So can I fly fly in with you? Yeah, I can come up from Stockton. We're supposed to buy our bus. Oh yeah, that's, Stockton's probably closer than it is here for my drive. All right, this one's a little tricky. So I already told you that the compound wound has one field winding in series and one in parallel. So when load increases when the load increases what happens to the resistance goes down. okay down. D -E -C -R -E -A. decrease resistance be cool if it did like an ohm thing but i'm sure it's not no nope. <laughs> put a big r decrease resistance r uh we have a decreased resistance um decrease resist actually let me finish this decrease resistance yeah, we'll do that. Decrease resistance. That's the French word. In the series. In the series um, circuit. That's one with the load, right? So we could take a look at it. So there we go. There, that one. All right, so as the load right there starts increasing, is that what I was talking about? When load increases, then the resistance here, decreases. the resistance goes down. So more current is going to flow through, 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 
series coil. Okay, so we're gonna. Coil and then the yep. Wind. So that's gonna increase right there. So, uh, the series winding current increases. What happens over here? Is this going to increase or decrease over here? Increase. Well, no, because I have X number of amps coming out of the armature. It decreases. And if I have more, more going to the left, then what happens to the right? It decreases. Oh, it stays the same because it's proportional. Yeah, it stays so the same proportional. It's only proportional. going to draw a specific amount of amps. Um, yes, if it stayed the same, then it would do that. Um, so yeah, so out would remain about the constant, which, you know, that's what the notes say, but you know, when I really think about it, maybe I'm wrong on this, but as the resistance goes down in the load, then if we have a proportional amount going right and left, I was just thinking out loud, as the resistance in the load goes down, then more current's gonna go through this winding, right? Okay, that makes the assumption that less would go this way. The assumption would be based on the fact that the generator is at either max output or has nowhere else to go. But I'm just thinking, hey, if this more does go to the left, then it's going to increase the field across this winding, which would increase across the armature, which would cause the armature output to go up. If the armature output goes up and things stay proportional, you're still going to get a little bit more going right and left branch. You're like, I don't know. So I, either way, you're going to get a relative increase. In I would say so. Yeah. The Un unless the generator was already maxed out. Let's say it was already maxed out at 20 amps, which is very low. And then we added a whole nother load and resistance goes down. Well, it would take it from the parallel side and go over to the series side and keep it at 20. But that's just a whole nother thing. So. I probably just lost almost everybody. So, I believe it. All right, when load increases, decrease resistance in the series circuit. Uh, let me see, when load, let me see, where am I at here? When loading, decrease resistance in the series winding. Um, current, current increases. Current increases. Um, and parallel winding. Parallel winding current decreases. Follow? So, so when the load decreases, that branch now has less resistance. So it comes out of the, out of the um, armature and it's going to go towards the load side, the series side, because that has less resistance, which will take away some from the parallel side and current would then pretty much stay about the same. So an output remains, output remains constant. Do we really want it to remain constant if I added a bunch of loads? No. No. Well, unless it was already maxed out. Yeah, this is maxed out. Um, and then the opposite's true, of course, when the load decreases the in, you would get an increased resistance in the load. An increased resistance in the load would cause less current to flow through the series side, less current through the series side, and less current through the winding, which means the generator in theory would die off, but it won't. It will just send more over to the parallel side. Follow? So you're just kind of switching between series and parallel depending on which side has the most Resistance. Like it, like it picks up the slack. It would, but then the output's going to stay constant. I mean, like, you know, they said the, the low, the, the series ones are better for low, low RPM curve. Yeah. And it, so it's like it's like it kind of picks up the slack. It's sort of, that's what I'm trying, I don't know. Just yeah, like, I was doing the same thing. So, in other words, if we had 20 amps out and that's all we're going to get, it's maxed out, and we have 10 amps going this way and 10 amps going that way, but then we add <coughs> some loads. What happens to the resistance as we add loads? It goes down. Okay, resistance is going to go down, so this goes up to 15 amps. What does this do? It goes to 5. All right, so we got 5 amps going through here, 15 going through there. So that's the field coil strength. So we still have a field coil strength of? 20 amps. 
20 amps, all right, so and that's the point there. But I think the biggest and best point that I would make is this next point. Probably something I added, regardless of the type. I'm not adding words. All smaller aircraft, sure. Or maybe piston engine aircraft, because that's kind of something I'm familiar with. V5. Talking about the little tiny jet. Oh, yeah, the BD5. That's the what you said. BD5, yeah. Well, I'm on a struggle bus tonight. A I R C R A F T with a generator. Use a regulator. All right, let's talk about the construction. We kind of understand how they work. Let's talk about some of the nomenclature of it. An electrical engineer, I'm sure, could. We're not going to. It's beyond our, our scope. All right, construction. What are the parts of this? Well, the, the heart of the whole thing is the armature. See, armature windings are contained in the rotor, the rotating part or the rotor. So armature windings. are contained in the rotor. The rotor. Call it the rotor because it rotates. rotates. Right, armature windings right there. That's all of them. And there's quite a few of them. There's lots in this one. Um, they're connect the, the windings are connected to Connect to the what? What do the armature windings connect to? Commutator. 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 And the commutator does what? It mechanically converts AC to DC. Yes. Do you normally wear a hat? Uh, no. So that's why I, went, I didn't stop my hair. That's what it is. Like, there's something wrong with that. <laughs> That's right. It's fine. I mean, I didn't pick on your hair. We'll, we'll, we'll edit that part out, too. All right. So what is the uh, armature? It's turned by... What turns the armature? The engine. Usually turned by the engine. By either a belt drive. I could put that. Either gear-driven... Gear driven, G or driven. Maybe if I just wrote in all caps. Gear driven, uh, belt driven. Um, that was all I can think of. By the pilot by hand. In the oh, yeah. Wind driven. Really fast. <laughs> Possibly wind driven. Uh, oops, didn't want to do that. It has a, this is going to shock you, a laminated soft iron core. It sounds so familiar. I thought it just like Why does it have laminated soft iron cores? Okay, the laminations are because you want to prevent eddy currents. If you look at it, you can see there's a lot of laminations. But why do they shove soft iron core in between the windings? Because 
because it's uh, easy to prepare for the very and low for very permeable, but they do not have much retentivity. Yeah, it, it's it's just going to increase the production of it. Uh, let's see, laminated soft iron core mounted on a steel shaft. All right. Let's see, we have the field windings, which we talked a lot about. Would, would the soft iron cores be kind of like interpoles? No, they're just, they're just soft iron cores. They're soft iron cores. Okay. Remember, because this is the part that turns that collects the magnetism. Field windings. Uh, do I have anything to say about that? Oh, yeah, field windings, or what else do we call them? Field windings or field poles. Field poles. Um, um, I don't think my notes are correct. Um, wrapped around. Field shoes. Field shoes. Um, let me see. The field shoes. Oh, the field socks. Contain residual magnetism. And what's the whole purpose of that residual magnetism? Self-exciting. Self so do I need a battery to get this going? No. Oh, that's what self-exciting means. It maybe means something different to you, but that's what it means to me. All right, so we got the field shoes and the poles and the field windings. Um, and then we got the brushes. So Stephen can do his hair. Uh, they are carbon and graphite compounds, so they're carbon and graphite compounds. Uh, they are spring-loaded to apply pressure. Oops, I want to say spring-loaded. Pressure against the commutator. Mm, what else? Mm. Yeah, they, it, they are in a special holder that allow the brushes to slide. So as they wear, they slide in, the spring just pushes them in. So, so uh, they're in the sacrificial kind of wear material for them. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but in a way, no, because, and we'll get to it, the commutator wears as well. Okay. So we have to grind the commutator every so often. So special holder. Allows brushes to slide as they wear. It's just like brake pads in a way. Just like brake pads or sandwiches. Or, ma or magnetos. Or magnetos, yes. Commutators and special holders? Brush. The brushes. 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 Carbon and graphite compound. They're spring loaded to apply pressure against the commutator. So the brushes, brushes are spring loaded to apply pressure against the commutator. A special holder allows brushes to slide as they wear. It's all about the brushes here. And the brushes are replaced at 50% wear. So they get to be one half of their original length. You must change them out. How do you know when they reached one half their original length? Well, I can think of three ways. One, buy a new one and compare it. Nope, that's still good. Two, sometimes they have a wear mark on them. 
So you just have a brush. The brush will have a little wire connected to it. And it'll have a little dash line cut in it. When it gets that dash line, it's all right, so buy a new one and compare it. Look for a dash line. They don't all have it. Or look in the book and maybe it'll give you a uh, dimension. Yes. Uh, when I was, there was an AC generator that I was looking at. I showed you photos where it has these brushes that, put up, that they put on it. Yeah. It has like a trigger guard looking part. And once that guard is completely moved in, that's its wear indicator. It's cool. Of place. Good luck, Key. It'll show you. We don't have those on ours. So. No, I assume not. So, uh, spring tension. Should also be checked. I just threw that up there. Uh, we got the end frame. So I didn't bring a generator over here with me. I brought a part of one. So this is the case. This is more representative of what you'd see on a small continental engine. And you will see that this one got rather melty inside. So you can look down there. You can stick your fingers in if you want. You can see what the windings look like. You can see where the brushes went back down in here. Um, the hell, have fun with that. <laughs> you fall for it every time. <laughs> I'd be worried if you did fall for it. Throw a heavy optic guy. He's a lot bigger than I am. I think he could throw it back at me harder than I could throw it at him. <laughs> He's been arm wrestling me for his grades. So. <laughs> He's got an A. <laughs> Holds armature bearings. Um, holds the brush assembly. Uh, we have the drive end frame. That would be the opposite end. Um, also holds bearings. Uh, by the way, bearings can actually be bushings. They don't have to be like ball bearings like you're thinking. And what else I got drive-in frame? Uh, provides the mounting usually. Provides the mounting points on that end. We have to consider the cooling of the generator. They do get hot. So just like a magneto, sometimes they'll have uh, air blast tubes going on them. A lot of the smaller continentals, that space in the back where his fingers are sticking in right now, kind of hold that up it, uh, the, on the sides. So a band, I think I actually have the band. Yeah. So around the back of the generator, if those holes back there, you can see a band like this, and that's every annual inspection, that's what we do. We take the band off, inspect the brushes, and this little tube right here is where a hose would go that would have air blowing into the into there. The openings on the side. Getting all melty, melty. Yeah. Uh, but you have to consider the fact that a small continental, that the, the open end, we're missing the, the, uh, the end frame, but that mounts to an engine, and so there is no blow through. But if that was a light combing, it's gonna sit down the bottom of the engine up front, and so the air is gonna blow all the way through the frame. It's open on the front and has a little cooling fan on it. So, just like a car. Just like a car. Exactly. So what's, the, what's the little hole for? 
That's the, the, this yeah. would be like for a continental, like yeah, yours? Just, yeah, we want to generate. Yeah, where well, you put a scat tube right there. Oh, okay, and then that just like. So air would come in the cowling, yeah, yeah, go yeah, through yeah. a tube up in here, blast in there, and then come out some other way. That's what I was asking, but then all right cooling let's see well obviously the small ones are air cooled may have a blast tube some have fan so cooling um, may have a fan may have a fun may have a fan um, maybe blast air-cooled don't be fooled by generators because sometimes they'll say what which way does it turn and you'll look at the the drive in you look at the fan you go oh well it's obviously pulling air in this way and going through they work the other way they can come back the other way so don't let the fan fool you on which way it necessarily goes uh, they are not bi-directional they actually have a way they turn and for the most part, the way they turn is the opposite of exactly what you think it's going to be. <laughs> you always have a 50% chance of being right. You have a 50% chance. All right, ratings. What are we going to rate it at? Um, the ratings are found on the data tag. Data tag attached to the generator. Oh, well, what if you don't have a data tag? Then you probably shouldn't have that one on your airplane because you can, it doesn't sound like a uh, approved one to me. Um, it's typically um, well, they're they're rated in amps. So when I say it's how many amps? The generator can can deliver at its rated voltage. Well, what happens if you exceed the amp output of the generator? Let's say it's a rated for 20 amps, and you're constantly pulling 35 out of it. You got a fire starter. Bad regulator. It overheats, the solder in here starts to fly out, it starts to come apart. I don't know, you end up with something that looks like that. Yeah. Um, why I put this here, I don't know, but I guess it's worth talking about. The coming in speed. It's stamped. It's it's oh, riveted okay. on or screwed on or something. The plate that was on the motor. It's just paper. You gotta be never wash the engine. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's ruined it. it kind of dangles right in front of the like, <laughs> propeller, propeller. You know. Coming in speed. That is the speed. The speed the generator will begin <laughs> to produce normal voltage. I'm going to say nominal. So the coming in speed of a magneto is the speed, the slowest speed at which it will spark all of the cylinders or all of the spark gaps consistently. So the coming in speed of the generators will begin to produce the nominal voltage. So I think I told, shared with you flying the Cessna 140. It had a generator on it, not an alternator, but a generator. And when I was doing my night flights, you know, this is before LEDs, so you're flying around, you got a taxi light and a landing light on, and all the little incandescent nav lights, all three of them. And so every time I would pull the generator back to idle, the lights would get a little bit dim, and you'd see the ammeter go to negative. So the battery is feeding the system. The generator's doing what? Nothing. It's, it's not, nothing, zero. It's not, not even very little, it's off because the maximum amount of voltage that it can produce at that point would be less than 
the 13.2, 13.4, the, the, so it's below the battery. So it's gonna shut itself off when it's below the battery. And we'll get into how it does that. And then as soon as, you know, it land, taxi around, take the runway, add full power, whoop, there we go. It'd come online and it would go all the way to, it's like a 25 amp generator, go all the way to 25 amps, how come? Feeding the battery that was just discharged with all the lights while I was taxiing around. And you'd watch the ammeter slowly go back to about a needle's width away from zero, which means well, it's just slowly charging the battery and it's providing the load to the aircraft. So it had a coming in speed and I could say, oh, it was probably about maybe uh, 1100 RPM on the, on the aircraft engine. So how fast the generator is going is a whole nother thing. It's got a little tiny gear and so it was probably spooling a lot faster, but it was 1100 on the aircraft, give or take. All right, break of time.